Now it's time to circle back a bit and we're going to take another look at Octoprint. We've done a lot of videos in the past on Octoprint, and this series of videos isn't necessarily so much about Octoprint as it is about Octopi. What's Octopi? Well, it's an image that's been prepackaged so you can use it with your Raspberry Pi to get Octoprint set up and working quickly. It comes with Linux, Octoprint, and all the bits and pieces you need to get it working. And this video is mainly focused on Octopi 0.17. There have been changes made in that version to allow you to use Raspberry Pi 4, as well as a few other things, and I thought it'd be a great time to walk through the differences in between Raspberry Pi 3 and 4, and make sure Octopi 0.17 is going to work with both. So as usual with these videos, let's get right into it. And before we get started with Octopi, let's go ahead and take a look at the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 Model Bs side by side, just to get a lay of the land a little bit and what's changed. This side, we have the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and on this side, we have the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm not going to go through all the differences in between these two Pis, but I am going to hit the highlights. They both have quad-core processors. The Raspberry Pi 4 is a bit faster, of course. The Raspberry Pi 3 had 1 gig of memory. You can get up to 4 gigs of memory on the 4, depending on which one you buy. This one does have 4 gig. All the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi 3 were USB 2.0. On the Raspberry Pi 4, you get 2 for 2.0 and 2 for 3.0. Raspberry Pi 4 also now supports Bluetooth 5.0. One of the biggest changes from 3 to 4, and it doesn't really impact us at all because we're just using it for Octoprint, is the video. On the 3, you had the full-size HDMI plug that would support 1080p. On the 4, you now have two micro HDMI plugs, and it will support 4K 60 frames a second. So an advantage to some users, but not really helpful in this instance. And the last thing I want to mention hardware-wise about the Raspberry Pi is the power requirement. That's always been a big thing with Raspberry Pi. On the 3B+, Plus, you had this micro connector, and you could run it at around 2.5 amps and be successful. 5 volt, of course. On the Raspberry Pi 4, they have switched to a USB-C connector, still 5 volts, but they're recommending you run it at a minimum of 3 amps. So not only are we switching up the connector, you're going to have to source a power supply that has a little higher amperage. So we're going to compare Octoprint a little bit on these two different Pis, but no matter what Pi you choose, you're going to need a few extra things to get it up and working. So at the bare minimum, you're going to need the Raspberry Pi, you're going to need some sort of power adapter for it, this one is for the Raspberry Pi 4. It has the C plug, and it is 3 amp. And you're going to need a micro SD card of some kind. The speed of the SD card can matter quite a bit when it comes to the performance of Octoprint. This is a Samsung Evo 32. You don't necessarily need a 32 gig card, but I'd at least go with something like an 8 gig. You'll also need some sort of SD adapter so that you can load it onto your computer. Now, let's check out Octopi. So let's head over to Octoprint. Dot org, and we'll just head to the download page, and you can download Octopi 0.17.0 right from here. Now while that's downloading, you're going to need some sort of imaging tool to load this onto your SD card. I like to use Win32 Disk Imager because it's easy, but there are a few out there if you have one that you prefer. So I have my SD card loaded on my computer already. I can just pull up Win32 Disk Imager, link to this in the description. Let's open our downloads folder. And we'll take this Octopi zip, we'll right click, extract all. When that's done, we'll have a folder with an image file in it. We can jump back to Win32 Disk Imager. Our device is on E. We can go find our image file right here. Hit open. And there's nothing on my SD card, so I'm going to go ahead and hit write. And we'll confirm it. Once it's complete, it'll say write successful, and it should open up the SD card in a new Explorer window. So we'll just hit OK here, and we can exit Win32 Disk Imager. And now we should see our boot, and then our secondary partition on that SD card. So we'll go into Boot, and here's where all the config files are going to be for Octopi. And there's one thing we need to change to make it work with our wireless network right off the bat. We need to get into Octopi-WPA-Supplicant. Don't edit these with Windows Notepad. The formatting won't be correct, so I like to use Notepad++. So we'll right-click and edit. So here's where you'll configure your Pi to work with your network. Most wireless networks nowadays are going to have WPA or WPA2 security. So we're just going to remove the comments from these four lines. 
we're going to enter our wireless network name. Remember, the network name and the password are both case sensitive. There's my network name, and your password will go right here. And down here towards the bottom, we'll just make an update to the country that we're in. A lot of times this isn't used, but it's still good practice to do it anyway. So we'll comment out GB, and we'll take the comment off of US. And we can save this file. Now we're ready to unmount the SD card and load it onto our Raspberry Pi. To do it safely, you can come down here to the corner, you can right click on this USB icon, and we'll eject boot E drive. And now it's safe to remove the SD card and put it in our Raspberry Pi. Now when your Raspberry Pi is booted up with the SD card in it, you should be able to get to Octoprint from octopi.local. So you can go to http colon forward slash forward slash octopi.local. Now on a Windows machine, a lot of times to get this to work, you're going to need some additional file and print sharing services called Bonjour. They are available to download for free, so we'll search for it. We'll just search Bonjour Windows, and we can download it right here. We'll go ahead and install it. Now that it's installed, let's go ahead and close the browser, and we'll open up a new one. And now we should be able to go to octopi.local. And the first time you log in, you're going to have the setup wizard. Now, if octopi.local isn't working for you, pretty much your only other option is to find out what the IP address of your Pi is and log in that way. The easiest way to do that, i found, is to get into your router and see what IP address was assigned via DHCP when it booted up. I'll show you what mine looks like. Every router is going to be different, but this might give you an idea of what you need to do. On a lot of home routers, your default IP is going to be 192.168.1.1. And then you'll have an administrator account where you log into your router. And you'll want to look for something that says DHCP or LAN settings or maybe network map. And then you'll see a list of all the IPs that are on your network. A fresh copy of Octopi is going to be listed as Octopi most of the time. And then you're going to have a DHCP address by default. That's one that has been assigned dynamically rather than a static address. My Octopi is 192.168.1.17, but everyone's is going to be a little bit different. So that's how you can find it if octopi.local doesn't work. But back to my Octopi instance, and we'll just go through the setup wizard. We'll hit next. Access control, you definitely want to set up a username and password. And after we've entered the credentials, we'll just hit Keep Access Control Enabled, and we'll hit Next. Configure anonymous usage tracking. This data is used by Gina to help improve Octoprint. It is anonymous, so I suggest you go ahead and enable it. We'll hit Next. Online connectivity check. So Octoprint by default is going to check to see if you are on the internet. But if you're not on the internet, it won't run these checks, and that'll save you some resources. So go ahead and enable connectivity check. We'll hit Next. Plugin blacklisting, we can go ahead and enable that. This will keep you from installing plugins that might have known issues. So we'll hit next. Printer profile, you can go ahead and set this up specific for your 3D printer. You can change it to whatever name you like. Print bed volume. Your axis speed, this is when you're moving it manually with Octoprint. If you're tuning your extruder, for example, in Octoprint, you definitely probably want to lower this down to 100. And then you can change some settings configured for your hot end, nozzle diameter, number of extruders. Again, we're going to leave this default because I don't want these settings copied into my other changes. So we'll just hit Next, and we'll hit Finish. And now Octoprint is set up and ready to go. You can plug in your printer. Your webcam should start working if you plug it into your USB port. All that should work normal. But again, for these tutorials, I'm going to leave it vanilla because I want to copy this into other instances. But now that Octoprint is set up and ready to use, I would like to know if it's any faster on the Pi 4 than it is on the 3. And one thing I'd like to measure just for fun is boot time. How fast is Octoprint ready from the time we start the Raspberry Pi? So let's shut down Octoprint. We can just come up here and hit shut down system. And we'll hit proceed. And we'll bring up our Google stopwatch here. And I'm going to bring up command line and I'm going to ping the network interface to see how fast it's available. So let's just do ping 192.168.1.17, and we'll put a dash T next to it so it continually pings it. We can just go ahead and kick that off now. You can see the requests are timing out because it's not available. And we have a Raspberry Pi up here in the corner. Just to give you an idea, this is the power LED, and this is the activity LED. You'll see those blink when we power it up. And I'm also going to use the Easy Refresh plugin for Chrome up here. 
and I'm going to refresh every second. We've got our stopwatch going, we're pinging our network interface, so let's just go ahead and turn the power on and start our stopwatch at the same time and see what happens. Ready? Go. So the network interface became available at around 26 seconds. And Octoprint came back at 1 minute and 34 seconds. And that's pretty good. That's the stats for our Raspberry Pi 4. One of the great things about Octopi is that it's backward compatible. I can take this SD card out and use it on pretty much any Raspberry Pi hardware. So I'm going to power the Pi 4 down now and run the same test on the Pi 3. So let's go ahead and power down. I'll unplug the Pi 4. We'll swap our SD card into the Pi 3. We'll cable up the power. And we'll start our same test again. Now the IP address of our Pi is going to be different because it's a different MAC address, different hardware. So we will have to change that. I have gathered what the IP address is going to be. So we'll control C this and we'll switch over to 1.62. Again, the Pi 3 is down and our browser is refreshing every second. That refresh will keep it from coming up completely, but it should give us a good idea of when it's available. And we'll just start our test again. Ready? Go. The interface was actually ready just a little bit quicker, around 23 seconds. We did lose a couple of pings, but that's probably pretty normal. And our Octoprint was available at around a minute and 23 seconds. So it might be just a little bit more efficient on the Raspberry Pi 3B. So it turns out the install of Octopi 0.17 is exactly like it was before in other versions. It installed on the Raspberry Pi, no issues at all. And I know the testing that I did wasn't that scientific. I just wanted to see what the experience was going to be like in between a Raspberry Pi 3 and a Raspberry Pi 4 while using Octoprint. Now, should you run out and get a Raspberry Pi 4 to run Octoprint on? Well, it's too soon to tell because there's a couple big sections of this install that I want to go over and I'll be getting to those really soon. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.